good morning students as uh, today uh, we shall learn a very special issue on philosophy of religion for the students of uh, six semesters ba under guwahati university issues of philosophy of religion arguments for the existence of god as you all know students philosophy is the study of life and the universe as a whole so philosophy always investigate what is the mystery of the life what is the mystery of the world as a whole so it is not satisfied with the phenomenal world only it always try to discover what is there beyond the physical world as you know philosophy has three branches epistemology metaphysics and axiology epistemology discuss mainly with the knowledge what is knowledge how knowledge is possible how knowledge can be achieved etc and metaphysics is a branch you as you know it discuss about the metaphysical world means we the people we are very much concerned with some metaphysical realities like god at a very morning we you know remember god oh god please uh, help me for a successful day etc then we deal with our soul we feel that i have a soul we i have we have a soul then we most often talk about the mind so these are some of the realities which cannot be materialized but we cannot avoid again so philosophy as it is the study of the life and the universe as a whole that is why it discuss about those metaphysical realities which which cannot be ignored which cannot be ignored science may sometimes speak that why to discuss about the god philosophy's agenda is the agenda of philosophy is will have to discuss about god because it is related to our human life we cannot avoid god even the scientist can't avoid the god emotionally so we we'll have to justify whether god has existence or not so philosophy in philosophy of religion issues of philosophy of religion as i have we have already said philosophy of, you know has a special issue called philosophy of religion now going to the discussion of philosophy of religion we should know what is religion as students you know religion is one kind of a way of life way of life when we say religion we sometimes immediately we feel that okay it is hinduism islam christianity etc these are the conventional religion but what is the definition of religion the definition of religion as you know is it's one kind of way of life you know followed by certain group of people okay having certain faith on certain deity norms etc so that is philosophy of that is a religion okay that is religion but philosophy of religion is you know it is one of the way of studying different religions study of different religions means you are going to study all the conventional religions scientifically so religion is a way of life you have certain faith on certain god you know you have certain uh, you follow certain norms etc but philosophy of religion is the way of studying different religions okay see here what is philosophy of religion it is it is not a uh philosophy of religion is a uh, not a study of particular religion but a way of studying different religions of the world means in philosophy of religion we are studying all the religions its merits and demerits its origination etc so philosophy of religion is not a religion it is one kind of way of studying different religions here the issues of philosophy of religion is origination of the world idea of god whether we have created the god or god have created the us created us then different beliefs religious ethics etc see sometimes or most often it happens so philosophy of religion is the study of all the religions together it is a scientific study of different religions and a rational study of different religions so philosophy of religion is not religion it is a way of studying different religions here we 
investigate all the religions from the beginning, very beginning. That is origination of the world, different religious issues, God, beliefs, norms, etc. Here we are not going to accept anything immediately without any justification. We will have to have proper justification whether certain norms in religion should be accepted or not, what are the merits, what are the demerits, everything will be judged rationally or scientifically in philosophy of religion. And it is the time, you know, need of the hour, it is a need of the hour to have a view from philosophical standpoint about all the religions. Because in a time of, uh, you know, global era, it is a time of uh, globalization, we the modern people, we the civilized people are suffering from the demerits, so-called demerits of religions. So it is the very significant issue to study different religions scientifically and here philosophy of religion will help us in this way, in this regard. Now as we have already known philosophy of religion is the matter of heart than, a, than head. Now here see as I have already mentioned issues of philosophy of religion is origination of the world, how the world have been originated, how the religion have been originated in the world. If you see the primitive age, we have different uh, uh, you know assumption that uh, religion is you know uh, God has if you see certain religion that is Islam or Christianity the God has created human beings in Hinduism the Lord Brahma has create, uh, created Manu from Manu the uh, man have been created then if you see the uh, see Islam religion then it is said uh, God uh, Allah has created Adam and Eve and from them the world have been created it is a religious explanation but if we see the evolutionary process scientifically, then we shall find that at the very beginning there was no human beings, there are different species and from an evolutionary process after a long time, you know, after a long time of that evolutionary process, we the human being have been created. So if we are the best animals, then God would have created us for the first time, but it, it is not so. We are developed, evolved animals. That is why philosophy of religion will try to investigate what is the starting point of the origination of religion. Starting point. That is why here we have in philosophy of religion two theories, anthropological development and the psychological development of religion. In anthropological development of religion, we have different theories like animism, totemism, ghost theory, etc. These, these theories try to say that religion is a you know, natural development in human beings. Unlike other animals, unlike other animals, we have uh, certain uh, capacity that we always developed. We are civilized. In a starting point, suddenly we have uh, we thought that we should wear the clothes. We should have certain cultivations. Uh, for uh, people started thinking that uh, we should start cultivation, and having that cultivation, we we didn't uh, worry about the food. Then afterwards, uh, no. When the sun comes out, we feel we felt that okay, this is a very bright thing uh, which will give uh, power, energy, and we should worship that bright thing so that he will uh, give some, you know, favor. So in this way, we had the, we had developed certain tendency to surrender ourselves in front of certain, you know, superior power. So that from surrendering tendency, that type of surrendering tendency probably the religious sentiment, religious issues have been started. So philosophy of religion will examine those backgrounds. It will examine what is the reason behind for which religion have been started. Then idea of God. It is now as we all know the basic fact of religion is God. If I am Hindu means I believe in certain God like Vishnu. If you are Islam then you believe certain uh, God like Allah etc. So in this way depending on the existence or belief in God we have differences among the religions. Now how much the issue of God is justified that will be discussed by philosophy of religion. Different beliefs we have certain beliefs in religions then ethics we have certain ethics wh what to do what not to do religiously. So these will be you know evaluated or this will be examined by philosophy of religion and it will suggest what should be done and what should not be done. So this is a scientific way of studying different religions. Now see why philosophy deals with all these religious issues. 
issues like god is closely connected as i have already mentioned issues like god is closely connected to our life how much this religious system is justified the literal meaning of religion is to bind the people you know religion the literal meaning of religion is to bind the people it bind the people it unites the people but is it the fact right now it is question is that we are fighting in the name of religion we have different divisions in the name of religions the civilization is in threat in the name of religion now how much these things should be uh, can be uh, how much these things is, are justified those who things will be discussed by philosophy of religion see here as in this class i have taken i have chosen existence the issues of existence of god among all the issues philosophy of religion deal with different issues as i have already mentioned but among these issues i just have selected the arguments for the existence of god in philosophy of religion as i have already said philosophy of religion deals with different issues of related to religions among these we have now for this class i have selected the existence of god arguments for the existence of god in philosophy of religion that syllabus uh, we have different arguments you will find ontological argument advocated by some stephen anselm then teleological argument or design argument then cosmological or causal argument and last one is moral argument as god has you know god is occupies a prominent place in the religious discussions as god occupies the prominent place in the religious discussion that is why it is very much required whether the existence of god is justified how much it is justified if it is justified how much it is justified these issues should be taken care of and philosophy of religion takes care of these issues first if you see the ontological argument the ontological argument is advocated by st anselm and rene descartes ontological argument is that type of argument which will try to prove the existence of god from its idea itself from its idea itself means for example we all have certain ideas suppose idea of perfection idea of beauty sometimes we can say oh he that man is very beautiful but he is not most beautiful in case of suppose in india who is the most handsome person the student student will answer that okay salman khan is most handsome person is one of the handsome persons means we have the idea of perfection and that is why we can compare that personally with that perfection means that par because of that idea we have certain knowledge we have certain knowledge of actual reality because of that idea of perfection and alsam says it is the idea of perfection for which we can establish a perfect entity it is because of that perfection the idea of perfection we establish that perfect entity and that is that perfect entity cannot be found in the world nobody is perfect it is said nobody is perfect in the world but we have the idea of perfection so according to anselm in his book proslogion he said as we have the idea of perfection that is why that idea cannot be deduced from zero idea must come from somewhere and that perfect entity cannot be materialized in the physical world that is why anselm said probably that perfect entity is somewhere else and which will be none but god or that type of that type of entity because that perfect idea we cannot be materialized in the physical world so from the idea of perfection we have got the idea of perfect being and that perfect being is god according to ansel in ontological argument he said secondly his idea was slightly modified by descartes now who is descartes as you know he was the first you know rationalist philosopher the father of modern western philosophy descartes slightly modified the idea of god 
and he has obviously he has supported ontological argument but he slightly modified the idea of uh, idea of uh, that uh, the, uh, he slightly modified the argument he slightly modified the argument anselm said from the idea of perfection we have established the perfect being from the idea of perfection but descartes said from not from the idea of perfection rather god is the creator of that idea okay there is a slight difference anselm said god from the idea of perfection we have established god Descartes said God has created the idea of perfection in our mind. So, there is a slight difference, but both are talking about that idea of perfection and both are the supporters of ontological argument. So, this argument is trying to establish or justify the existence of God from philosophical standpoint, from philosophical standpoint. But let us see whether that argument can give us perfect knowledge about God whether it is beyond criticism or not let us see okay criticism of ontological idea ontological argument means this argument is not beyond criticism what are the criticism probable criticism if you see critic says can we establish can we establish the golden mountain from the idea of golden mountain I suppose I have the idea of golden mountain in my mind. I have the idea of golden mountain. But can I say that golden mountain has existence in reality? It is not possible. So, according to the critic, from your idea you cannot materialize everything. And in that case, in the argument of ontology, ontological argument, you cannot establish the idea of perfect uh, establish the perfect being like God from your idea. It is not possible. That is the position of the critic. And the second it says it ignores it means the ontological argument ignores the distinction between the thought and the existence. According to the critic ontological argument ignores the distinction between thought and the existence means you have certain thought you may have different thought, but your thought cannot be always actualized. So, there is a difference between thought and existence, but ontological argument failed to establish that difference. Why? Because they said as I have the idea of perfection that is why there must be idea of perfect being and that perfect being must be God, because as that perfect being cannot be actualized in the physical world. So, ontological argument cannot be a perfect, you know, it is it cannot be said as a perfect argument for the existence of God. Now, let us see what the other thinker says. Second argument as we have already mentioned teleological or design argument. Students as you know teleological argument the word teleology comes from the root word telos. Telos means purpose. Telos means purpose which means you know telos means purpose which means the design. Sorry telos means purpose which indicate the again you can say one kind of design purpose telos means purpose this argument says everything in the world has a purpose everything in the world has a purpose and as there is a purpose there should be a purpose okay as everything has a purpose there should be a purposer and that purposer na can none but be god because the world is a you know everything in the world has a purpose if you see the world has itself has a purpose then that purpose are cannot be a human being likewise the another terminology used for teleological argument is design argument now design argument says the same argument that everything in the world everywhere in the world there is a design everywhere the table has a design we the human being human being are has a design we cannot have a huge head so that we cannot carry in the breeding life if you see we we leave carbon di uh, carbon dioxide and it is you know accepted by the trees and trees will leave the oxygen and we shall accept the living beings animals so it is a it is a design it is a complex design and according to this argument this complex design cannot be 
designed by a human being or living being in the world he must be somebody more than a human being and according to the logical argument that designer or that purposer is none but god thomas aquinas the prominent advocate of this argument in his book summa thilio theologica he said as there is a purpose in everywhere in the world as there is a design in everywhere in the world so there should be a purposer as well as there should be a designer and that designer can be none but god according to teleological argument okay teleological argument is giving different phase of that argument ontological argument said from the idea of perfection we can establish the perfect being teleological argument will says from the idea of designer or purposer we can establish the existence of god here one addition is pele pele is a great philosopher he said he was giving the example of watts example of watts what is that for supporting teleological argument he said suppose we are in a picnic party and in that picnic party in remote area we have seen the stones will you be astonished wow these are stones obviously not because stones are a part of the nature so we shall not be surprised if we see the stones but in a remote area if we see a watch hand watch we shall be surprised oh that is a watch how can it be here then we shall think that okay probably somebody were there for picnic party or some other purposes and that is why that uh, probably that watch has been left out there then we can think as that is the watch it is a complex design and there should be a watch maker and the designer of that watch okay so pele said as watch has a is a complex machine where there is a designer or maker of that watch likewise the world is a complex design and that complex design must have a designer and that designer cannot be the human being that cannot be human being living human being that is why that designer must be somebody else who will be more than the living beings in the earth and he will be god according to teleological or design argument again see the teleological argument is also not beyond criticism as we i have already said philosophy of religion the task of philosophy of religion is to examine scientifically and religiously all the religious issues all the religious items all the religious customs etc so here teleological argument is also not beyond criticism what is the first criticism you see the supporter of this argument conceive the relation between god and the world in the manner of the relation between human being and machine teleological argument says teleological argument says the world is a complex design it is a complex design then there should be a designer the world everything there is a purpose there should be a purposer and that purposer can none but be god that is the position upon uh, the teleological argument there is a position of teleological argument but here the critic says you cannot you cannot compare the finite designer and the finite design object with the finite design and infinite design you cannot compare the critic says the world is you know is a finite object and depending on the finite object you are inferring an infinite designer and uh, that is not possible because here the watch is a finite design in pele's argument watch is a finite design and there is a finite designer so with that argument you cannot compare with the design which is finite and the designer which is infinite means with that infinite designer you cannot compare that infinite designer with that finite design so in the example given by pele the watch and its designer it is totally a finite object both are design and designer with that you cannot compare the infinite designer according to the critic in the first criticism then but there should be a difference between the finite and the infinite that is the point 
there should be a difference between finite and infinite. You cannot in infer or establish the infinite designer depending on the finite design that argument says like that. Now, let us see after teleological argument another argument put forwarded by philosophy of religion is cosmological or causal argument. Ontological argument we have found it is not perfect it is not beyond criticism then teleological argument also we have found it is not beyond criticism. Now, let us see what cosmological argument or causal argument says. Cosmological argument why it is known as cosmological because it is talking about the cause of the cosmos. Cosmos means the nature, cosmos means the nature it is talking about the cause of the cosmos and another terminology used for the cosmological argument is causal argument. Causal argument in philosophy there is a doctrine called causality, causality is talking about the relation between cause and effect causality is talking about the relation between cause and effect. Cause is the invariable antecedent of the effect, effect is the invariable consequent of the cause and it is said there is an invariable relation between cause and effect. Everything has a cause and the cause and effects are invariably related that is the doctrine discussed in philosophy. There are different opinions somebody says like philosopher like Mills he said cause is essential for the effect certain cause is essential for the effect. But the philosopher like Hume, David Hume, he is a skeptic philosopher, he said as you all know cause and effects are nothing but the succession of events. He is an empiricist and he says cause and effects are succession of events. So, there are different interpretation on causality. What the argument is trying to establish is that everything has a cause as the doctrine causality established, everything has a cause. So, if we see the world the chain of the world everything has a cause and if we try to find out in this way and finally, we shall reach a uncaused cause, we shall reach an uncaused cause. Means, if we take the world itself as a effect then there will be necessity of cause. If we accept the world is a effect then obviously, it requires a cause which is will be superior cause superior cause and that cause will be none but God according to this argument. That is why it is a causal argument and why it is cosmological argument because it is talking about the cause of the cosmos. It is talking about the cause of the cosmos means everything in the nature has a cause that is why it requires a uh, cause that, that is why altogether if you take the world as a effect then it requires a cause and that cause will be superior entity that cause cannot exist in the world itself because the world is the effect as a whole. So, it requires a cause and that cause will be none but God according to this argument. See there should be a cause of the cosmos which is uncaused cause otherwise there will be infinite regress that uncaused first cause is God. It is the doctrine again it is supported by Aristotle the Greek philosopher. There is a causal chain no doubt you are trying to find out the cause and that cause again will be effect and it will have another cause in this way you will go, but somewhere you will have to stop otherwise there will it will be infinite regress there will be problem of infinite regress. So, that argument establish that you need an uncaused cause where you will have to stop and that uncaused cause is none but God according to this argument that is causal argument. And this argument is also be criticized by certain critic. What are the criticism? Let us see. Again, like teleological argument, this argument, the critic of this argument also says it is difficult to relate God with the finite causal series. It is difficult to relate God with the finite causal series. See, God, which is infinite, it is established that God is infinite. Though we are not 100 percent sure whether God has existence or not, but it never belong to the finite series God is considered as an infinite entity infinite being. So, according to the critic like teleological argument in causal argument also critic says you cannot relate God with finite causal series. Here you can say okay, that finite object has part particular the, suppose the table table has a particular cause uh, as Aristotle says Aristotle in his discussion of causality a Greek philosopher Aristotle is talking about four types of causes material cause suppose the table 
table has a material cost that is wood it has efficient second one is efficient cost the efficient cost of the table is the carpenter then third cause mentioned by aristotle is formal cause that formal cause is the form of the table form of the table and final cause is the purpose behind the making of the table creation of the table so aristotle is talking about four types of causes material cause efficient cause formal cause and final cause okay there is you know there is inside the finite world there is inside the finite world the table is the effect cause is you know you can say the carpenter he is a finite being the wood he is a finite that is the finite object okay but here in causal argument or in cosmological argument we were talking we are talking about the infinite cause and the finite effect that is not possible according to the critic you cannot consider the cause of the finite world as infinite one you cannot relate finite and infinite according to the critic that is why here you cannot establish god as the cause of the finite world secondly as i have already mentioned about hume david hume he is a empiricist philosopher famous empiricist philosopher david hume as well as he was the great skeptic philosopher he was the philosopher who has rejected the necessary connection between cause and effect hume is the philosopher who has rejected the necessary connection between cause and effect hume said cause and effect are just like day and night they comes after day there will be night and again there will be day so there is these are the succession of events hume says cause and nothing but the succession of events you cannot establish that there is a necessary or in, uh, in, invariable connection between cause and effect he said for example the relation between cause and effect is for example the cloudy sky and rainfall we consider that the cloudy sky is the necessary cause of the rainfall but sometimes our experience says sometimes it happens cloudy sky never uh, sometimes not resulted in rainfall there is cloudy sky and afterwards sun comes out means it is not necessary that cloudy sky will always result as rainfall so hume says our experience contradict our experience cannot give us universal necessary knowledge that is absolute knowledge our experience cannot give us absolute knowledge that is why by experience we cannot establish anything permanently universally this is why hume says cause and effect is just but the nothing but the succession of events only cause and effects are nothing but succession of events that is why cause and effects are limited cause and effects are limited which are which can be considered in the finite world that is why if it is uh, god is included in that chain then god will also be limited according to hume means if we include the existence of god in the causal chain then god will be limited like cause and effect according to him then last one is if everything has a cause according to the doctrine of causality then god should have a cause that argument you know obviously the causal argument has established that there should be an uncaused cause and that uncaused cause is god according to the supporters of causal argument but critic says as the doctrine of causality says everything must have a cause so if it is strictly followed then god must have a cause and that cause cannot be discovered so according to critic we cannot establish god from the cosmological or causal point of view also so these are you know these are uh, it's a very critical arguments which are trying to establish the existence of god or de establish the existence of god or evaluate the existence of god as god is very much important in our life important why important we are till today we are not 100% sure whether god has existence or not still we are fighting in the name of god i am hindu because i am the believer of vishnu somebody is islam because he is the believer of allah somebody is christian he is the believer of god as the believing point is different that is why the religious sect is different and depending on the believing or non believing on certain god we are divided in the name of religions and we are ready to fight in the name of religions 
all uh, nowadays different kind of politics, different kind of terrorism are run because of the religious sentiments, because of the religious sentiments. So, this is these issues are very important to discuss. It is the need of time to discover the fact, real fact, what is the ground of religion, what is the justified ground of religion, what is the justified ground of believing or non-believing of certain God. That is a philosophy of religion, philosophy you know it has a certain branch called philosophy of religion, it try to discover scientifically or rationally all the issues, so that human community, human civilization can be recovered from certain dogmatism, certain dogmatism. Let us see that last argument given by Immanuel Kant moral argument. Immanuel Kant a German philosopher, he is you know very you know as we know he was the first uh, he was the supporter of criticism in uh, epistemology if we see we have three different theories rationalism which says reason is the only source of valid knowledge empiricism which says experience is the only means of valid knowledge then as it was found that both rationalism and empiricism were one sided theory because rationalism says only reason only by reason we can have knowledge of the external world but if we see the practical life only reason cannot give us proper knowledge without experience secondly likewise empiricism says only by sense experience we have knowledge of the external world only by sense experience but it is found only a sense experience cannot give us proper knowledge which sense experience we need we need the intellectual capacity we need the reason also so to establish a perfect theory of you know empiry, uh, epistemology Immanuel Kant has established that okay for perfect knowledge we need both that is reason and sense experience and that theory is known as criticism. Kant, Kant that German philosopher prominent German philosopher has supported the moral argument for the existence of God. Kant is very interesting philosopher we know that he was the supporter of the doctrine categorical imperative. Kant says in if in, in if we discuss ethics then Kant is the supporter of deontological ethics. What is deontological ethics? Kant says we should do our duty, we should do our duty properly not because we are concerned with the results, not because we are concerned with the purpose, but because our conscience is saying that it is a duty, it is a good thing to do and you should do in deontological ethics. Categorical imperative means Kant says our conscience is ordering us, our conscience always order what is good, what is good and our conscience orders us to do certain duty not because we are interested with the result, but because it is our sense that I know it is a good job, it is my duty and I should do. Duty for duty sake, duty for duty sake, Kant says we should do certain duties because it, it is because of our dutifulness. We should know that yes, that duty should be done by me, so that the society or so that it works for the society, it works for the humanity, etc. So Kant was talking about categorical imperative, Kant was talking about our conscience. Kant was talking about deontological ethics and that Kant is giving certain arguments for the existence of God which is called moral argument. He said God is the postulate or presupposition of our moral life. What does it mean? Kant says God is the postulate or presupposition of our moral life. In day to day life most often you will see we do certain wrong things, bad things, evil things. But we know that yes, I have done certain mistake. Though law had not captured us, though other people had not captured us, though I have been escaped from all the eyes, still I am personally feel that I have done something wrong. That my conscience says I have done certain wrong. What does it mean? It means that I should not done particular thing which was wrong. It means my conscience is saying that that is wrong and I feel that God may punish me because I know that I have an idea that God is the perfect moral good 
God is the perfect being who will evaluate all the things, who will evaluate whole, observe all the deeds and if I do wrong things then God will punish me. Means I feel that God is the moral ideal. Our conscience always see, our conscience always speak the good. We have the faith on moral as well as divine lawgiver. God is the highest moral ideal to us. According to Kant, God is the highest moral ideal to us. We feel that God is the perfect being. He is the perfect moral ideal. If I do certain wrong things, God will punish me. So, from this you know, idea, from this concept, we establish the existence of God as a moral lawgiver as a moral lawgiver we feel okay i if i have uh, if i do good thing i will be rewarded if i do bad thing i will be punished who will punish me who will punish me i feel that somehow god is perceiving me though i have been escaped from other laws god will punish me so from this assumption from this presupposition according to kant we have the idea of god the supreme lawgiver according to this argument but this argument is also Kant as himself has said, Kant never according to the critic, Kant never took the moral argument for strict proof for the existence of God. Kant himself said it is not the strict arguments for the existence of God. He said just moral life of a person does not necessarily depends on the existence of God according to the critic. Sometimes good action may have reverse result. Kant says, okay, we have the idea of moral lawgiver, so we can establish that that moral lawgiver cannot be a human being and he should be more than a human being and he will be God. He cannot be the president of America, the most powerful person in the world. He cannot be the president of America. He will be more than that and that is why he will be God, like entity. But sometimes it happens, if you do good things, sometimes the result opposite result comes in spite of doing certain good things the result may be bad so critic says it is not necessary that there should be a certain lawgiver and he will always give you the good results of your good action it is not necessary so in this way if you see the four arguments ontological argument then teleological or design argument then cosmological or causal argument and finally the moral argument those arguments are trying to establish the existence of God, no doubt. Try to justify the existence of God rationally or you can say scientifically with arguments, not emotionally. But still those arguments have certain lacuna, certain imperfections. Why? Because the metaphysical entities you cannot establish perfectly. You, the metaphysical arguments, the metaphysical entities, you cannot say that that metaphysical entity has certain uh, existence finally. We always feel that we have a mind. We always feel that we have a soul. But can we establish it physically? We cannot. Well, I can feel my mind, but I cannot find out the mind inside my body. I can feel, I can, we most often say that we have a soul, but we cannot establish that soul. So likewise, though God is very essential issue in our life, in the name of God, we have different religions, still we cannot establish the existence of God perfectly. Still we have to examine the existence of God as it is related to our life, but here philosophy, the tendency of philosophy of religion is, there may be certain power which will govern the world, but that power cannot be divided in the name of Lord Vishnu, cannot be divided in the name of Lord Allah, cannot be divided in the name of Lord God. He is only one. If he is there, he must be one. He cannot be more than one. So it is not justified or it is not rational as human being to divide ourselves in the name of different gods. And if we feel that, the world will be a very good place to live because religion as we have known we know religion has come to our life because of our need when we were uh, reduced our life in a very primitive stage when we left the life of sebes when we established one place when we had started cultivation at that time 
parallelly the idea of religion came maybe from our tendency of surrendering ten, uh, surrenderingness maybe of uh, we, we were astonished by perceiving the certain natural phenomena we tried to surrender ourselves in front of the bright thing like sun the huge mountain which will save us from all kinds of uh, storms so from surrendering attitude we have developed religious sentiments and if you see as the science is talking as science is giving evidence as we are the creator of religions god is one of the element of religion and if the we if we the human beings can create the religion then it implies automatically that we have created the god because god is one of the element of religion we human beings are the creator of religion science is saying if we study darwin's that the evolution of human being then we shall find that we are evolved animals god has not created us in one day because after a long time of evolution we took the human shape and gradually our brain had been developed and at the stage of development we you know started cultivation we started religion we started culture everything we had started with the human beings with the best animals best animals in the living being of course it is a hypothetical statement that human beings are best animals it is a hypothetical statement it is not confirmed because we only our we are saying ourselves that we are best animals there is no consensus among the animals okay so if we see the history scientifically and rationally we shall find that it is the human beings who have created the religion and as we have created the religion probably we have created the god so this is a big issue whether god has created us or we have created god it is a very important issue and the intention of all this discussion is we should not over emphasize on the metaphysical realities like god we should not make ourselves ready to fight in the name of religion as i have already says i am hindu because i believe on certain god he is islam he is he has believe on certain god different god so that ideas are created by us only that ideas are created by us only it implies god may be there one power may be there according to philosophy of religion but we should not be over concerned with that entity we should do our duty properly unitedly we should serve the human entities then god will be satisfied if he is there there is the position there is the motto of philosophy of religion now see what is the relevance of this issue the idea of god is closely connected to all the people including the believers of science even the scientist some of the scientists also have faith on the god so philosophy should deal with the issues with rationality however it is not easy to establish the existence of god as it is shown by the respective criticisms though god is very much important the issue of god is very much important in our life it is not very easy to establish the existence of god it is not very easy to establish uh, the existence of god it is why we should not over emphasize on religions religion is a way of life its motto was to unite the people but in the name of that motto gradually we had divided our society we had you know we had started uh, believing differently and in this way the society is in panic situation now the even human civilization in threat in the name of religion so we will have to save the human religions uh, human civilization and uh, it will be possible from the study of philosophy of religion philosophy as i have already said it is the life study of the life and the stud, uh, study of the life and universe as a whole it will covers all the issues of human life and god or other metaphysical issues are related to our life that is why philosophy will discuss these issues it will evaluate these issues it will try to find out whether what type of significance it has in our life and it is it is found that god has significance as it sometimes give us confidence or other things so god has significance but different gods in the name of different gods the fighting among the people should not be encouraged as it is not possible to establish different types of god in the universe we are the living beings in a planet we are living beings in a planet only so from that planet 
we should not establish different gods, different kingdom of gods, and in the name of the different kingdom, we should not fight among us. So, this is the issue of philosophy of religion. The aim of the philosophy of religion is to establish harmony among the society, among the people of the society, so that we can establish, we can find out the real issues. And that will be done by philosophy because philosophy is the rational and scientific study of all issues related to our life. So, this is for today. The reading reference, you can study for this issue the books of uh, Gelo George, the philosophy of religion, then philosophy of religion of John Hick, then comparative religion by Y. Masi. These will be very relevant books for the issues concerned. So, this is for today. Thank you students.